Welcome Zuma Forms to another Dynamo 55B video. Today's video is going to be on the continuously variable transmission of the Zuma 125. We're going to go into it uh, in detail for a lot of the new members. Veterans, you guys have seen this all before. You guys have done this all before. So it's really not for you, but you're welcome to join us. Okay, new members. First part we're going to discuss is the very here is the OEM variator. Here is an improved variator. It, you can feel the weight difference. Okay, Since it's attached to your crank, having a lighter variator will also take weight off the crank, which is good. That's what you want. I don't want to get too much into this particular variator because there's a bunch of them out there. And I haven't tried all of them. Okay, So I can't comment on their performance. I do know that this TST one works. It's got two different ramps. Um, I don't want to spend too much time in this because this is not what the video is about. Okay, um, There's many out there to choose from. I do know that the Polini variator that is for the 125 or claims to be for the 125 does not work. So that is one that you want to stay away from. This right here is where your rollers and or, and or sliders go. Okay. Now, what is a roller, a roller and a slider? They come in different shapes and sizes, first of all, because they're for different applications. Uh, ATVs, snowmobiles, four-wheelers and such, they use them. This is one that I had from uh, the old Polini variator that I was talking about. It comes in a 2017 size. That's not what you want. You don't want these. The size for the Zuma is going to be 2012. Now, along with the sizes, they come with different weights all the way from as low as I think 6 grams to as high as maybe 15 grams. Okay, The heavier the roller, the more top end. Okay, well don't try putting you know all 16's in your variator, expect to get to 80 miles an hour. Doesn't quite work that way. Okay, The lower the weight allows for quicker acceleration but less top end. You can't have both when you're working with the, the transmission. Uh, it's a very delicate balance and we'll discuss more into detail on that. These are sliders, okay? Uh, they don't flat spot, so they're for good for people that travel long distances at consistent speeds. Um, city goers prefer rollers. These ones claim to be faster. I'm not gonna get into the specs. I just wanna let you know that there are two different types. Okay, rollers. These are OEM rollers, okay? Um, at high speeds, you can get what's called flat spotting, which I had one here. Um, what it does is literally puts a flat spot on the roller, and it, it it does degrade the performance of your of your CVT system. Okay, so you want to make sure you have good quality rollers. This is the backing plate of the CVT. Okay. goes on here after you've inserted the rollers okay and this is goes towards the back nothing fancy really with this part all the whiz bang is on here okay this really just keeps the rollers on the inside I've taken the time to polish the inside of mine okay just a light felt wheel with some polishing compound make it nice and smooth and give it a little bit more longevity to the rollers Is their fan okay? It's got different fins on it to keep air circulating. Uh, some of the performance rollers don't have any fans, but uh, what I've been seeing on the forums, the ones without the fan, without the fins on them, uh, tend to generate a lot more heat and can you know damage the belt. I think those are for pretty much race use only. I would find a variator system that has a fans. This one has a lower profile than OEM, so you get less, I guess, air resistance. Um, but they also serve as heat sinks as well. You want to pull as much heat away from the dry face out as possible. This is the center shaft or the boss. Nothing fancy in here. Basically, this is what the variator spins on.
Now let's talk briefly about the belt. This here is the Polini belt. Uh, it's Kevlar. Uh, I've had a lot of actually success with these unless you know you really abuse them really long times at high speeds and we're talking about 60 70 miles an hour uh, they're gonna break but uh, it'll fail just like any other piece of equipment okay it has its limitations you want to check this often you want to make sure that you're not getting any cuts or any frays on top if you're starting to get any cuts especially on the inside you want to figure out what the problem is with your CVT system because a properly tuned uh, CVT system should not be making any kind of cuts or damage. If there is, there's probably a part that's uh, defective. Okay, let's talk about the clutch for a moment. Here is the OEM clutch. Here is a very well used Polini clutch. Um, one of the differences between the stock clutch and the uh, uh, performance clutch from uh, Polini here is that the pads are much thicker out of the box and uh, the Polini ones are slightly larger which provides a greater gripping surface also there's probably it's probably a better uh, compound too this is not a go fast part all this does is help with acceleration a little bit and help maintain speeds like while wow, you know going up and down hills this is not going to make you go any faster so if that's what you're looking for work with the CVT or do something with the BBK let's talk about the inside of the clutch what we have here is a series of clutch springs there's three of them what these do is control at what RPM as this thing is spinning around inside your CVT does this engage the clutch bell which in turn puts power to the wheel. The lower pound springs, and I forget what these are, uh, the lower weight springs will engage the clutch sooner so that the bike will actually engage at a, at a lower RPM. The higher RPM springs will engage, are, are heavier so that this thing has to be spinning faster in order for it to spin out and touch. How it spins out is it basically it, it just opens up like this, okay? is it pivots on these these corners right here um, I just have I haven't messed with these some clutches are adjustable using Allen keys I'd rather just have a fixed cl clutch um, in my opinion it's just it's truly plug-and-play some of the adjustable ones we're talking about very minor tuning detail and if unless you're using your bike for race purposes and you need every little bit then get spend the extra expense and get one of the uh, racing clutches where it's adjustable for the fixed one they're, they're a lot cheaper so um, this one here works good for me now let's talk about the other let's talk about the torque driver real quick all right this is a torque driver they got from race concept uh, it is a performance one because it, it, it is adjustable. I, I sold my OEM one, so I don't have that to show you. Um, this performance one has two different slots on the inside here. And I should have taken it apart. Here you go. You got your straight one. And actually, it's a 45 degree one. Okay. Uh, that's for, you know, much quicker ex and... Uh, better acceleration okay and then you have one that's similar to the OEM one I put mine on the straight one I find that you get a lot better acceleration that way that is a really tight fit on there how does it work is it opens and closes with your CVT system to allow the belt to ride higher and lower in the pulley okay and it works just like a mountain bike or a 10 speed or something like that something that has a uh, different gears on it so that you can uh, achieve different ratios okay this is how it opens and closes. you want to get one that opens up you know fairly wide this this torque driver does that the next part of the torque driver is the torque spring this is a 1500 rpm spring um, I think it's a little bit thinner than the OEM spring. 
Okay. What that does is it controls how fast or how long you stay in the, in the gear, if you will, that you're in. Okay, this one is also good for hills and for providing uniform acceleration over the, the OEM spring. Okay, let's talk briefly about the clutch bell. Um, the OEM one is just uh, a, a stamped piece of metal. Um, this one here is the Polini Eve Evolution. It's uh, designed, has these deep heat sinks in here for designed for dissipating a lot of heat. That's what you want. You want to keep this, this the clutch will work better if it, the cooler it is. Um, this is also machined out of one piece of metal so that heat will evenly be distributed throughout the bell. And um, it also provides better traction. What One thing I've done is I took some 60 grit sandpaper, maybe 80 or 100 grit would work too. And you want to scuff that up on the inside there. Um, provides a better gripping surface for the clutch. And then you see, as I was mentioning before, as this thing will spin around, these arms swing out and provide uh, power to the wheel. Okay? The last part that I'm going to cover is the final drive. These gears are inside there. Some of them are pre pressed in, some of them are not, okay? Um, by changing this gear ratio, and there's plenty to choose from, I think from 12 all the way to 15 or 16. What they're talking about is 12, 13T, 14T, 15T. That's the number of teeth on here. I forget how many on this one. I think this one might be a 44. Okay, but in any case, as you change this ratio, this will allow her for top, higher top ends. Doesn't give any more power, but what it does is it reduces the RPM in the engine and allows you to get the higher RPMs because there is a rev limiter or some kind of uh, engine limiter uh, that limits you to, I, I forget how many RPM, but what you want to do is you want to have more tooth on here and it allow for higher top end. Again, just don't go straight to 16 using on a stock motor. You're not going to get to 80 miles an hour because you're still, you still don't have the horsepower to do that. Okay? We'll just kind of work on each other just like that. Okay? So I just went ahead and changed those in there. I even done a video on how to do this. Okay? And there's also some great write-ups on how to do this. All right. So enough about that. Okay, stay tuned for part two. Okay. Let's pause for a moment. The thing I wanted to show in the first segment was shims and what they're used for. What you're trying to do when you put shims on the end of the spline here is that you want to make your variator face wide, as wide as possible, so that this belt. can sit as low in the pulley as possible. Look out for that.